Trojan Sports Now. Welcome back to Trojan Sports Now, and with one of the hot button topics in sports these days being concussions, we decided to, to talk about the issue with the head athletic trainer of Troy, Chuck Ash. Chuck, thank you for joining us here today. Good to be here. And if you could just kind of give us a background, we know you've been here a long time. You and Coach Blakeney have a long history together. Just kind of give us a background of, of, of yourself. Well, I came to, to school here at Troy in 1974, and I, I worked as a student trainer for four years, and I was actually the first graduate assistant athletic trainer ever okay. at Troy. And then uh, I was lucky enough to go to uh, Columbus, Georgia. Dr. Andrews, you know, mm -hmm. uh, was at the Houston Clinic in those right. days, and he had been our team doctor for since 1974, and I got to know him very well. And uh, Phoenix City Central High School athletic trainer job came open, and I went to Phoenix City. Uh, because of Dr. Andrews and his association there with the Houston Clinic. And then uh, I spent five years down at Early County, Georgia, where ironically I was uh, the athletic trainer and the head baseball coach. <laughs> I was the head baseball coach by default. But in 1987, uh, uh, a new position was created at Troy as an assistant athletic trainer. And I, I came back here f and I was here four years, uh, well, four seasons. And then when uh, Coach Blatney came in, I assumed the the head athletic trainer job, and so for the last 23 years, I've, I've sorry, 23 seasons, I've been the head athletic trainer. And you told me a stat right before we started this interview that this is how many games? This will be our 272nd game together. And that's pretty amazing. You don't see that very often these no, days. No, I, I imagine that's probably the longest <laughs> anywhere. Well, okay, so the reason we brought you here today is to discuss concussions. It's mm -hmm. a, a topic that's really uh, prevalent in football, but in many sports, and just uh, with athletes in general, trying to, to maintain their well-being. First of all, just kind of tell us, what is a concussion? Well, a concussion is a, is a brain injury. And um, the, the difficulty with concussions, from our eyes, is it, sort of like uh, trying to figure out what's wrong with your car with the hood closed. Right. You, know, you don't get to open the hood and look around. <laughs> you just kind of have to look at the outside and, and sort of try to figure out what's going on. And I think in some ways we've been ahead of the curve uh, in concussion management. We were lucky enough back in the early 90s to have Dr. Whiteside with us, who was uh, our eminent scholar in sports medicine. He had been Dr. Andrews' partner in Birmingham for years, and uh, he was uh, looking for a little slower pace uh, than Dr. Andrews' pace. And so he, he came to Troy and he spent 12 years with us. And in those days, uh, there was not much study uh, going on with concussions and Dr. Whiteside was way ahead of the curve and I, I think he put us in a position uh, so that now we're, we're we, we've been doing the things that people have been mandated we've been doing that for a long long time especially as it relates to balance testing uh, just two or three years ago the NCAA came out and said well you got to have some sort of a balance testing program well you know we've had computerized balance testing since 1995. Now is that the baseline type test that you hear about? <clears throat> There's several types of baselines. There's some that are that are more subjective than objective and we like to lean more toward the objective uh, test because it it takes personal opinion and the uh, uh, human factor out of, out of the equation. Uh, what we really uh, like is called an impact test and it's uh, about a 20 minute computerized uh, test that all our athletes that are at risk for concussion take and we establish a baseline test and then there's national norms established uh, with, with every school in the country that's using impact so not only can you compare your athletes baseline impact test to uh, their post concussive test but you can compare it to everybody across the country and sort of sort of have some norms to, to help you, 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 you uh, determine whether or not they're ready to go back. The balance testing is just a component so we have a impact baseline and we have a balance testing baseline which we've uh, interesting enough we've, we, we've, uh, we've used uh, a couple of types of computerized balance testing. One is uh, called a Neurocom plate and they cost about $50,000 and this uh, company loaned it to us for a little while and we played with it and got some really good results with it and then uh, Dr. Amanda Andrews who is our curriculum director got a grant from Biodex and we got a, uh, a balance uh, machine from them that cost about twelve, thirteen thousand dollars $13,000 and we also have a Wii balance and what we've been trying to do is establish norms with the Wii balance that are similar to the, the many, many tests that's been done on the Biodex test, 
because most every athletic training room in the country could afford a Wii, whereas okay. they couldn't afford the $13,000 BioDeck. So if we can tie those two things together, um, I think we will. And, and not to sound <coughs> silly, but when you say <coughs> the Wii, you mean the, the Nintendo Jeez. Wii, uh, the, Nintendo the Wii. video game system. Correct. And all the testing that we've done, uh, there's not a dime's worth. There's not $13,000 worth of difference. There's maybe a dime's worth of distance, but difference. But for what we're looking for, the Wii is very, very effective uh, in giving us the data that we need to have to help decide whether or not someone needs to go back from, from a concussion. Now, exactly how does a concussion happen? Uh, we see in football all the time with the major hits, but I mean, it can happen in, in all various sports. How, mm -hmm. do, how can they occur? Um, I read a study several years ago where they went back and looked at all these heavyweight boxers that, that were, were getting hit in the face right. or whatever, and they determined that almost 99% of the knockout punches were not seen by the, the guy that got knocked out. So I think uh, in some ways everybody's looking at, well, what's the, the helmet padded with and what's uh, the strongest materials and things like that, right. and I think we should be looking at how can we increase the vision. Of the, of the athletes and help them see more what's coming out. So what are you looking for on the sidelines with, with the different severities of, of the concussions? Well, uh, in my recent experience, I've learned that uh, every symptom is important. Just because you get knocked out doesn't make that any more important than severe nausea or dizziness or loss of memory. All those symptoms need to be treated somewhat equal. And it, we just have to do a really, really good job of differentiating those symptoms from other things that can happen in a game. Um, it'd be easy to, uh, well, like in this instance right here, when I, when I leave your studio, my, I, I'm, I'm going to have a headache from the hot lights. Right. And so uh, sometimes someone comes in and has a headache, and so do you decide whether it was it from a, from a, uh, a hit, or, or was it from being in the sun too long, or was it uh, just, you, you just have a headache. So. Uh, our difficulty is lying in differentiating those symptoms of, of virus or a, a cold or uh, just don't feel good to, to what is actually a concussion suffered from a blow to the head. Now say somebody uh, gets hit on, and during a game uh, and, and they're slow to get up. You go out there and, and you think it may be a concussion or mm -hmm. there was a blow hard enough to, to maybe cause a concussion. What, do you, what are the steps that y'all take? We have a sideline test that we do that we also have a, balance, uh, a baseline on mm -hmm. uh, called a SAC test. And it's just a, a, a basic set of questions that uh, most people who have not had a concussion can answer correctly. Right. And so that's just a sort of easy screening tool. But in my mind, the best test is my ability to get to know the players and uh, how they react to adversity what their personalities are so that when I start a conversation with them, I can, I can pretty much detect if things aren't just right. Right. Now, just being out there, you, you see the way guys tackle these days. A lot of guys are leading with their heads and stuff like that. Do you have any, um, any effect on, on prevention with the concussions? Are you telling the coaches, hey, we got to start training them to, to hit the right way or, or the different helmets or things like that? I don't, I don't know that the targeting rule is specifically going to help concussions. Okay. I think when we start hitting below the head, we're going to see a lot of other things. Right. I think when, when we start tackling receivers by their knees, we're going to start seeing a lot of knee injuries. Right. And most receivers I know would rather get tackled up around the shoulders than they would around the knees. Right. So I, I don't know if that's necessarily a, a con concussion prevention. Okay. Well, what about the helmets? You see so many different types of helmets that they say can help lead to it. I know you said that that's not a, a big... Uh, issue, but do you think that there could be something with that? All helmets are good. Mm -hmm. If they pass Noxie certification, they're a good helmet. Mm -hmm. uh, in our mind, the best helmet is the one that fits your head very, very well. Right. And you have all the uh, the straps where they're supposed to be. You're wearing a mouthpiece. Uh, you've got air in your helmet. And most of the time when we see a guy that, that uh, or a lot of times when we see somebody has a concussion, they didn't have any air in their helmet. It wasn't like they had too much air or not enough air. They didn't have any air. And that's just, you know, it kind of falls back on the player to take some responsibility to maintain their equipment and check it every day because you've got 135 guys out there. We can't go around and, and uh, 
put the air gauge in every helmet. Right. Now, a another thing that we see these days is, is people being a lot more cautious about concussions. Uh, have you seen a big difference? I know you said Troy was kind of proactive in their approach, but uh, since the start of your athletic training days and in, in the way that concussions have been treated. Mm -hmm. I, I think the, the, the biggest thing I've seen is that the more we've learned, especially in the last three or four years, the more we realize we don't know. There's just a vast amount of information out there that's just totally untapped that we, we just don't understand about concussions. So I think uh, because of the focus nowadays, you have to err on the side of, of caution. I don't know if we will ever figure out the entire problem. It goes back to the car hood <laughs> analogy. And uh, yeah, it, it's a difficult topic. It, there's, it, it, uh, there's no easy answers. Well, this is one we probably could spend a lot of time on, but we're running out of time. So I'd like to uh, thank you for just shedding a little light on this topic, and thank you for being here today. Uh, thank you for having me. Stay tuned for what's coming up this week in Troy Sports.